Hi, are we going to enter a crypto winter? Is Bitcoin going to fall even further? That's the $1 million question. And my opinion on this topic is probably different to what you see in most of YouTube. Most people say you should buy the dip right now. We've come a long way up. We have consolidated. And over the long term, Bitcoin rises. The Bitcoin price goes up. And so you just need to buy and hold. And when the price falls, it's just a better opportunity to buy in and get more Bitcoin for your dollars. Now, in general, I do agree with this thesis. But of course, the problem with buying and holding are those crypto winters. It's those big, big losses, those 85% losses. And so if you can just to a certain degree, find a way to time the market to identify when things are overheated or when things are very cheap. I personally think this makes life much easier. I don't subscribe to the idea to buy and hold forever, even if there's mania outside and even if points such as safe moon or musk moon or moon moon if those kind of coins get just pumped and people make and lose a lot of money so obviously there is a lot of risk taking for my personal taste too much risk taking going on and so it's those kind of phenomena where i feel the market is ripe for a correction now obviously we already have somewhat corrected so what you see over here in green is the bitcoin price and so far from the top to the current price we have corrected around 40%. Now, I personally think we might go down further. And I see this both on a technical analysis point of view, but also on a fundamental view. Now, fundamentally, we always have to ask who are going to be the new joiners in crypto? Because what pumps the price long term in crypto or in Bitcoin is new adoption. It's new people coming into the space. And the people that have bought over here for 6,000 or over here for 3,000, those people are potentially de risking right now. They have made a 10x on their investment. Maybe they allocated 5% of their money to Bitcoin, then it grew to 50%. And so when you started out with 5%, you're probably not that convinced that you're comfortable holding 50% of your money in such a volatile asset. So those people over here, they are at least partially out now and they have sold to the new people, to the micro strategies of this world, to Tesla, and of course also to the new retail guys. Now, who's going to be the next buyers? I think it's hard to say. It's probably a mix of all of the existing buyers just getting more committed to the asset class over time and accepting Bitcoin as a replacement for gold. And so once the ETFs in America are out and once it's easier to buy on a regular basis, maybe even for pension planning as an uncorrelated asset to say your stock portfolio, then we might see long-term gains. But those gains won't be parabolic. They will be slowly over time. And so when there are those big crashes from people that bought over here during the early days and that are now de-risking, I don't see the people, the new people that come into the market and scoop up those cheaper prices quickly. Now let's go into the technical analysis. And the reason why I see that we might easily drop to 25, maybe even 20K in Bitcoin. And I think you could call this a crypto winter if we drop from 60 to 20K and if we stay at 20K for a while. In green, you see the Bitcoin price on a logarithmic scale, historically starting from 2011 all the way to today. In red, you see the one year moving average. And in white, you see the two year moving average. The first indicator that we see here in red is the extension from the one year moving average. So how much did the Bitcoin price diverge from the moving average? Or in other words, how quickly did we rise comparatively speaking? So we see here in April 2013, the Bitcoin price was roughly eight times higher than the one year moving average. So the price was at around 174 and the moving average was somewhere around $18. And when we look at those peaks and check how much did the price actually drop after such a peak, what looks relatively innocent over here is actually pretty scary. So let's zoom in there. So when we zoom in and we just look at the weekly closes from the top down here to the bottom, we had a 57% drop. Now for the second peak, we got an 80% drop. And last but not least, this drop you're probably familiar with. This is what happened in 2018. 
and here we also dropped more than 85%. And so I'm a fan when volatility is that high to at least attempt to time the market somewhat and try to find times where we are likely overheated. And when everybody is pumping moon moon and safe safe, that's a relatively clear indication that people are just throwing money at random stuff. Now, when we look at those peaks over here, we can see that over time, the extension from the moving average declines. So during this last crash, the price of Bitcoin was not even three times as high as the one year moving average. And so the prices were not rising as quickly compared to the other peaks. And that makes sense because Bitcoin nowadays has a way higher market cap. So in order to change prices in relative terms, in percentage terms, much more money is needed. And so the swings to the upside and the downside, they slow down. They slow down, but the magnitude themselves doesn't change too much. 80 something percent drop over here and 80 something percent drop over here as well. Now I find this moving average extension very helpful because it shows a very clear picture. Every data point is lower. We don't just observe random data here, but we can actually explain why this happens. And a very interesting pattern I find is whenever we have a big extension, we tend to move down to the moving average again. So let's just look at the two year moving average extension. We spike up in this bull run and then we cool off and we cool off all the way down to the moving average. What you see here horizontally in blue, by the way, is the zero line. That's when we cross the moving average. So you can see over here with the extension, we cross the blue line. And at the same time, the price crosses the moving average over here. Now, what's scary about this chart is that whenever this extension happened, we went all the way down to the moving average. And then we stayed below the moving average for quite a while. Then we heated up again and we came back down all the way to the moving average and we stayed there for quite a while. So there's no case where we heat up, then just partially crash a little bit and then go up again. But we always have this big cool down period. And so I think it's not unreasonable at all to see how this price could fall to the moving average again, to the two year moving average. And if we just draw an imaginary line, how the moving average could develop in the future, it could rise something like this maybe. And that's probably an optimistic guess because we can already see how the moving average is flattening out. If we just take this, we could easily drop to say 23K. If we draw this moving average line a bit flatter, maybe something like this, we might also go to 21K. And that's just by hitting the moving average. Now in the past, we didn't stop at hitting that moving average. We didn't directly bounce back. We stayed below it for quite a while. In fact, during this crash, it was for one year. And in this crash, it took approximately one and a half years until we decisively got above it again. So who doesn't say that something like this could happen? We're trending sideways for a while, go maybe slightly below 20K even. And then when everybody lost interest into crypto, no more Dogecoin pumps, no more random speculation, then might be the time when the true believers start to put their money in again. Now, do I say it has to happen this way? No, obviously not. Nobody can see the future. But just when I look at YouTube and when I look at all those people that are 100% sure that we will hit at least $100,000 in this or in the next year, this is a different perspective at least. It's a counterweight to what you see elsewhere. So of course I also hope prices continue to rise. I'm invested as well, but I try to stay flexible. If the party is really over, I am not worried. I still have money on the side and I could accumulate more. And so I'm pretty agnostic. If prices go up, we all make profits, that's great. If prices go down, we have a real buying opportunity. I think right now it's still too early to call this a real capitulation. Real capitulation, that's what happened at the end of 2018. So this is how the last cycle looked like. Prices went parabolic and then with this crash, suddenly this upward movement, this nice pattern was broken. And then after a while, people started buying again. The price seemed to stabilize. Very few people thought that Bitcoin would fall below 6,000. It looked like we had a really clear floor over here. But then the real capitulation happened. Boom, we went down another 50%. That was the time 
that was the time where really nobody was interested in buying crypto anymore. People said the story is over. Just look at those trading volumes. During the bull run, they were rising and rising. People were more and more interested in crypto. Then came the big crash. A lot of people sold and then gradually trading volumes declined. And with it, overall interest in crypto. Nobody was watching crypto YouTube channels. Nobody was Googling Bitcoin. So when you see that volumes are so low, compared to the hype times, you can tell that the disinterest is at a peak. And so just some random whale probably said, there's no potential here anymore. The hype is over. And so I rather take those $6,000 than waiting for the price to melt even further. And that's when this big crash happened. Now what we currently have is not a capitulation at all. But the peak here also looks very different to the prior peaks. In the past, a cycle peak has been a very short-lived heated period. So volumes went really high, the price shot up very briefly, and then came a pretty quick bleed afterwards. The same goes for the second peak. Volumes increased a lot. The time of maximum price was very brief, and then we bleed it. And in the 2018 crash, we had a similar price movement. Prices went parabolic. We peaked quickly, and then we fell. And so that's why most people did not anticipate this extended drop here because we didn't sharply peak. We didn't even have high volumes at all. So it didn't look like a typical market cycle peak, but it does look pretty similar to what happened in summer 2019. We had a run up. This run up was around a 3x. We stayed high, lost momentum, and then we crashed. And this crash was also above 50%. So let's just compare those two movements. If we go through something similar to what happened in summer 2019, this is what we could expect. A rising price, a consolidation at a high level. Now you can move this up or down slightly. So this is not really science here, but it gives a certain range. And so if you were to repeat that movement of 2019, we are looking at a 19k Bitcoin. So a similar range to what the moving average extensions suggest. So what's my final message here? Nobody knows where the Bitcoin price will go, but you shouldn't be surprised if it goes to 20k. It's in line of the kind of price movements that Bitcoin has done in the past. So if you're scared of such a drop and you're overexposed in the market, there's no shame in taking profits or in limiting your risk and just wait for a really good buying opportunity where you feel comfortable getting in. You don't have to always be invested. You don't have to be always 100% in crypto. Stocks and crypto, for example, have a relatively low correlation. So if you have very little stocks and a lot of crypto right now, and you don't want to see your crypto position to drop 50%, which it might potentially do, just shift some money around. Just make sure you feel comfortable with your risk exposure. Potential high returns do come with real risk. And that's not just an abstract thing. Prices can decline. So I know the message in this video was not too optimistic, not too positive. But if you like this video anyways, please give this a thumbs up. This channel is still very small. And by liking the video, YouTube will help to grow this channel. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe as well. I publish videos regularly. See you next time. Bye-bye.